Ari, tell me um, a little bit about the thought of enteronutrition. I mean, do you think it's something that is bad that we're excluding in a diet, or do you think it's something good that we're providing in the enteronutrition formula that is providing benefits to patients with inflammatory bowel disease? Well, thank you, Gary. So, first of all, we recognize this, this is, goes just to Crohn's disease, that it's, it's apparently a primarily an environmental disorder in most patients, and we used to think it was primarily a genetic disorder, and we've changed our way of thinking about this. And for years now, we've recognized that exclusive enteral nutrition in which children or adults, for that matter, drink a liquid formula for six weeks and get better um, was something that was useful, but we weren't sure how it worked. And recent data show that it's very useful, primarily in early disease, and about 60 to 80% of patients can get better just by drinking a formula, but we don't know how it works. So you asked, is it something that we're adding or something we're subtracting, and I actually believe that the primary mechanism, because we don't really know yet, we haven't investigated it enough, is exclusion of something in Western diet. Okay. And can you give us maybe two or three examples of things you could be thinking about? Well, for certain, and this, I think that the viewers have to understand that these are still early days, and these are based mostly on animal models, and uh, we do have some adult uh, human data right now, but the primary candidates are high fat foods that are animal fats or, or dairy and emulsifiers and we still don't know the role of gliadin which is a peptide that's in wheat and uh, those are the primary candidates that we think might be playing a role right now. We understand that a high animal fat diet uh, can change the bacteria that we have in our colons and intestines and, and change them to a, a a, 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 a composition that might be more aggressive, that might be able to invade the intestines. And we realized that exposure to emulsifiers and animal models and possibly to wheat products and emulsifiers are uh, chemicals that enable water and oils to mix together. And that's what we have in almost every food that we have in breads and dairy products and sauces and uh, processed cheeses and meats. Uh, those are, are capable of weakening our intestinal wall and allowing bacteria to, to enter. So, so a, we used to think that it was a, primarily an immune disorder and the possibility exists that it's not really an immune disorder in that sense. It may be a, a sequence of events that leads bacteria to invade our bowel wall, our small intestine or large intestine and that our immune system is attacking the, those bacteria actually and not attacking our intestines. And then using this knowledge, do you think that we should be able to engineer a better diet for patients with inflammatory well, bowel disease? Well, I truly believe that is the case. And as you're aware, we already have uh, <clears throat> preliminary data on that we haven't published yet uh, showing that we can manipulate diet and achieve remission and lower inflammation in a very large proportion of patients simply by manipulating diet, even without having exclusive enteral nutrition. Uh, but I have to refrain from supplying the exact dietary components right now because it hasn't been published. Yet. Yeah, well, we all look forward to seeing your results. It sounds very exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.